though I come from the oppressed minority, I'm not going to take up arms against government. And the reason I'm not is because this debate is worth more to me as an oppressed minority when I don't break down the structures that keep it going and then keep, the, keep us able to extract that from Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what we're going to lie that closing the opposition I'm going to give to you today. We're going to tell you three things. First of all, we're going to ask the question of who we can reasonably expect government is actually going to empower, whether they will actually be interested in social injustice. Secondly, I'm going to talk to you about whether or not there's more justice in a society in which the social fabric is broken down and violence is the means of ending political power. We can tell you there's no social justice in that society. And third, what I'm going to talk about is the possibility of long-term change and assuring that there's long-term position for the oppressed groups in the society. And I'm going to intertwine all my rebuttal into this because it's actually going to clash with this thing very directly, all the sides very directly. First of all, I just want to set a bit of context, because they've said this in an unjust society, and I think injustice is the fundamental thing within the society, but let's just understand what exactly these people are experiencing. In an unjust society, where there is some inequality or there is some kind of oppression, these people still have the ability to live a decent life, because if they're, if they're not, if they can't survive, it's genocide, and we've already covered that in the opening here, that's not what this debate is about. So they can live a decent life, they can have some level of opportunities, and they can have some level of participation in society. They lose, this is what I'm going to show you in our debate, and they're going to change the situation. So they are badly off, there is injustice, that's true, but they do have a role, they can survive, that's the real setting in this debate. Well what does it mean, what actually changes, and really establishing what the change will look like is what closing opposition are going to give you. First of all, let's ask the question of how exactly change comes about. Change doesn't come about by every single person in this oppressed minority standing up individually and fighting back. It comes about through specific types of organizations which we say aren't the same as people to specific power. Because the types of organizations which will lead this resistance movement that they believe, who will lead the violence, are going to be of a very specific type of nature. First of all, in the vast majority of societies, because these are angry minorities who are having to lash out in a very violent and extreme manner, they're going to be militarized and they're going to be extremely violent in their necessity. They're going to be the more extreme groups of society who are willing to stand up and fight back and break down everything that they experience experienced over all their lives in order to fight back. Secondly, they're going to be, by necessity and throughout history, closed and secretive and not open to hearing from the whole majority of their democracy, from their people. They're not going to take a democratic vote on what they believe is best for their people. They're going to choose it as the presumed leaders, the enforced leaders of the society. Why is this important? Well, why it's important is because the people who are trying to get justice for all of a sudden aren't actually represented by these groups. These groups just presume to represent them by saying they're going to fight for justice, but aren't necessarily actually interested in the depth of things that these types of people need. There's first of all a great deal of uh, no, thank you. There's a great deal of things these people need, not just removing government oppression. Secondly, there's also a great deal of diversity within any type of oppression, and you need some kind of representation. What this fundamentally means is that even if you're in a pressed group, even if you're so, in a pressed group, so, it doesn't mean that this group will be representing you. It doesn't mean you're going to have more justice from them. Secondly, what we tell you is that these groups have direct incentives to have to have some level of injustice and have some level of violence. That's why liberation groups, as they've been called, have struggled to really change society fundamentally because where they draw their power from is the type of injustice, is the type of conflict that's fundamentally about that. The generals who are in the liberation movement will have to give up their overwhelming say in deciding what way in which the country lives if this type of violence ends. That means there's an incentive to have violence, there's an incentive to at least keep political power, and there's not an incentive to really care about the vast majority of society and guarantee broad spectrum societal so, justice yeah. for everyone in that society. We don't see that they are proven in any type of way why we should expect their liberations to care about social justice as an ideal yeah. for everyone in society. They don't make it better, they just replace it with another illegitimate, unaccountable regime to sit down. So what else then are we going to talk about today? What exactly is the type of society that you then generate if you assume this is what you're going to do, if you have this type of violence? Well, the first thing that violence does is it breaks down the very day-to-day, -day, banal seeming type things that we take for granted, particularly things like your ability to have contracts, your ability to make decisions, your ability to enter into agreements that have trust, that so, have agreement. And they're going to say that that's not the type of violence they're talking about. But the problem with that argument is that if you legitimize violence every time you're unhappy, if you put it into the power of the people themselves that they can judge when they're unjust, when they're not getting their way, if they feel, for example, that they can't feed themselves or they can't afford certain amounts of food, you legitimize violence throughout society and as a principle within that society. So, that breaks down the type of contracts directly through the conflict itself within the civil war and through the lasting spillover effects of violence. That means that you don't have a society that's based on trust and contracts. You don't have a society that can, for example, have a working economic system so, that so. allows it to actually feed people. You rather have a violent society which people have to get by in ways in which they aren't able to rely on trust, they aren't able to rely on the types of things we take for granted. That means you have a lesser able economy, you have a society that can't feel its people, even if it was more justly inclined to, which we don't believe it will be. Yes, sir, very quickly. This is 
not about genocide. This is about states that react violently with demands for the cessation of social injustice. It's about Myanmar cracking down on demands for political rights. Yeah, deal with that. He's right. I actually said that earlier, didn't I? Say, I'm pretty sure I did that this isn't about genocide. This is about when states are trying to be violent. But what you have to fundamentally prove is that the change you're trying to bring about will be better and will actually be achieved. Yeah, yeah. You can't ignore effectiveness in this debate. This is a change debate. And what we're fundamentally saying is the change you generate is not about, is not going to be solving the social inequality, rather it's breaking down the social fabric that fundamentally gives people the ability to live a good life, to have some level of wealth in. Why else is it not good? It means that political power in the society in which this violence has been legitimized is all of a sudden based not on any democratic legitimate mechanism, not even on any type of cultural mechanism that has been set in place in this dictatorship, but rather based on violence itself. Why is that important? It's because there's probably going to be quite a few oppressed groups in any given society, even if you have a change in the certain on where the focus of where that oppression is. You need to protect all those different groups, but you can't, because the people who have the most power are the people who are willing to be violent and able to be violent. That means their policy only protects the most violent and most potentially powerful groups within society, but they don't protect the vast majority of the rest of society who aren't willing or able to be violent. They simply shift the political, cap political capital to be about violence rather than about things people can be involved in. How can there be better change in our society and how our moral work? What we tell you is that the possibility of change throughout history has not been brought about by violence, it's been brought about by when press groups become structurally important to society. When they become so important to society that society can't get by without them, that they can't ignore them and oppress them, that they have to give them a role in society. The way in which you do that is to keep going in a working society, not to withdraw in a violent manner from society, but rather to stay important. And as you grow more important, as you grow more economically important, as you grow more politically active and politically developed, you grow more vested interest and you give these people an incentive, you give an incentive to actually change the structure of your society. If you have their model, you break down any incentives because these are fundamentally removing themselves from society and they're doing it in a spectacular, violent way, which says to the rest of society, we're not interested in being part of you, we're not interested in you actually focusing on us or changing, we're rather going to be violent. What we'd also tell you is that in order to take advantage of the moment in which there is enough violence and there, um, these groups are important enough to have change in society, you need political development. You need groups who are willing to develop the type of structures that allow them to speak to governments, that allow them to be part of democratic processes, but you don't get that. Rather, you get a violent regime, a violent guerrilla group to work well up. If you want to have long-term change, you need people part of society, you need them showing that they're meaningful for society, and you don't need to break down the fundamental fabric of society that allows all of us to live a decent life. We beg to oppose. Thank you.